Hello, Bio30, and welcome to our video on ovulation and implantation. We are going to be looking at the process of how we go from ovulation to implantation. So during this lesson, it's important that you connect LH and progesterone to the events of ovulation and implantation. You need to be able to describe what is cleavage. You need to be able to do the order of listing from the development of embryo from a zygote. I'll show you what that means. You need to be able to tell me what is a blastocyst and how does it move into gastrulation, as well as we will eventually be looking at a couple other hormones and summarizing some stuff. For now, we are going to start on our notes and talk about what happens after fertilization. So we're starting at day zero. So you don't have day zero in your notes and that's okay. Uh, just know day zero for us is fertilization. So you'll see on our form here, day zero, fertilization. You do not need to draw anything down on this. We're going to be labeling a different diagram here shortly. Day one is the day after fertilization, and that is when we see our first cleavage, which essentially cleavage is just a fancy word for division. Um, so to cleave apart or pull apart. So our cell divides via mitosis. So if you look under day one on our diagram right here, you're going to see it goes from single cell to internally a two cell stage. That two cell stage will continue to do that for multiple days and divide and divide and divide. And that is called cleavage. And what happens during the process of cleavage from about day three to about day five is once we have about 32 cells around day four, we now don't call it a zygote anymore. We now refer to it as a morula. So this is one of those stages of moving from a zygote to an embryo. So we start with a fertilized egg. That is now an a zygote. Now the zygote becomes a morula. And that's about on day four here. So you can kind of see that here. This is what it would look like internally. And we call this a differentiating morula. Differentiating just means a word for becoming something different, to move and change. So by day five, our morula has moved around, has form some inner and outer layers and it started to kind of flatten itself because it's going to look to implant into the uterine lining, specifically the endometrium. On day six, we now have that morula moving into something called a blastocyst. So we call the part that's the center of it. So this is the blastocyst. So our morula is becoming a blastocyst. The inside is called the blastocele, which is fluid filled. And then we have all of these cells along the outside called the trophoblast. And we have an inner cell mass, which then will differentiate and start to help implant. So the blastocyst has these villi, so little tiny hairs and enzymes that are secreted by something called the chorion. And we'll talk about that in a minute. And what it does is it implants itself through building up those enzymes, releasing those enzymes, and it'll attach itself to the wall of the uterine. And that's called pregnancy. Now, at this point, we call this structure on about day eight or nine, a blastula. So what we're going to do is we are going to take this picture you see here and we are going to label it. Your picture in your notes is a little bit different, so follow along with me labeling it through. Make sure you have all of the stuff from day one to six written down. So here's the photo you have. So what we're going to do is we're going to start off by talking about ovulation. So here is the ovary. As we already know, we've talked about the ovary. Immature follicles go to developing follicles, become mature follicles to ovulate. At that time, ovulation happens is because LH, the hormone, spikes. LH spikes, we ovulate, and then what happens is, is we form a corpus luteum, which starts to, to put out progesterone. The reason it's putting out progesterone is to maintain this lining so that we can have implantation. So at day zero, at ovulation, we have our oocyte or our ova, okay? And at day zero, we have fertilization. Fertilization then goes through that four to two to four to eight cell division called cleavage. So in your notes, you have labeled part A and part B as ovulation and fertilization. You now need to label part C as cleavage and then label each of these stages of cells. As a reminder, we're looking at about day four after fertilization when we see something called a morula form. So this is day four. We have the start of a morula. That morula has now traveled into the uterus and has started to become that early blastocyst. So that differentiating morula is becoming our early blastocyst. That blastocyst has an inner mass and an outer trophoblast, blast, and then that inside called a blastocele. It is inside the uterus and it is going to travel 
and go and implant itself through the use of enzymes and the villi. So this is the process of ovulation to implantation. You need to know each of these stages and what they're called so that you can talk about how does an, a zygote become an embryo. So again, reminding ourselves at fertilization, this stage is called a zygote, meaning it's the very first stages after fertilization, it's going through cleavage. After a zygote, we get a morula. That morula is just a mass of cells that is going to start differentiating, changing into a blastocyst. That blastocyst is going to undergo gastrulation, which we'll talk about later, to become something else. So we're going to keep building on the story of how do we get to an embryo. So within this picture, you can also add some key pieces that we have already learned, such as the menstrual cycle. On day 14, we know approximately LH spikes and we ovulate. So that's part of the menstrual cycle we have learned. We then have now know that during this time, during day 15 to about 28, that progesterone is increasingly being released so we can maintain that endometrium lining. And this is the reason why, is because as the egg is traveling, okay, as the egg is traveling, if it's not fertilized, we need to get rid of this endometrium lining. But in this picture, we are starting over at day one because we have fertilization. So the menstrual cycle still continues, but now because of fertilization, at day 18 in the menstrual cycle, we're actually looking at day three in gestation, meaning we are now, this individual has now had a fertilized egg for three days, but they're on day 18 of their menstrual cycle, so they don't even know that they are pregnant. By day 23, um, when we would see, or sorry, day 28, this should say, uh, when we start to see the menstrual cycle starting, um, if they are pregnant, it would be day five of pregnancy, and they wouldn't get that uh, flow of blood because there have implantation occurring. So again, this is the process of what it looks like. So the implanted blastocyst is here. This one's going this way, I should say. I pointed at this ovary, but it's going this way. So you have your oocyte that was released, fertilization occurring. You then have your zygote. You go through cleavage as a zygote. You become a morula. You differentiate into a blastocyst, and then you implant. So over here, we just have some pictures of an example of a sperm meeting an egg and just size difference. And then what you can see here is the starting of an embryo, which we'll talk about here shortly. I just want to give you one more picture just to show you again what is going on. So we have a fertilized egg with our cleavage through here, our moria and our blastocyst. So these would be really good things to write down or, or copy down and then label later if you would like. You can always come back to the video to do that. So now what we're going to look at is we're going to look at what happens after we have implantation. So it, cleavage is kind of happening inside the fallopian tubes, and then implantation is going to happen after. Now what sometimes happens is, is people may mistake implantation bleeding for their period, so they may not even know they're pregnant for even a little bit longer than expected because they get a little bit of blood and they think that they're having a period. But realistically, that could be implantation blood that as the blastocyst is implanting in the uterine lining, a little of that uterine and lining is shed. Okay, so that's this is just a little infographic showing you the differences. So let's look at what's actually happening. So on page 18 of your notes, you'll see that there is a fill in the blank section. Um, there is a blank missing. So I would like you to write trophoblast down above your notes and then add in the layer of the trophoblast is called that this layer is called the trophoblast. Okay. So it's the outer layer. So your note should say trophoblast forms the outer layer of the blastocyst. If you can just add that in, that would be great. It just got cut off. So your trophoblast uh, is the outer part of the blastocyst. Now what's really, really, really important, and I would like you to star all of this information, is that this trophoblast becomes something called the chorion. The chorion will later become the placenta. So you can see the really key stages that are needed to make that placenta, which we're going to talk in depth about a placenta and its importance. But a trophoblast becomes a chorion. A chorion becomes a placenta. So about five to seven days after fertilization, we have attachment to the endometrium, and we call this implantation. Implantation fully is completed between the 10th to the 14th day. So this is an example of how we're moving from inside the fallopian tubes into the uterus. So we are at the blastocyst phase. We've passed zygote, we've passed morula, we are fully into the blastocyst phase. 
So again, just one more really great picture of just looking at what is going and what is occurring as a female ovulates an egg, that egg is fertilized, how does it travel from the fallopian tubes to the uterus? So keep that all in mind. This is just the first part of the story, the first journey um, from leaving the ovary to getting into the uterus. We are going to talk in depth now um, in the next video about how do we get from just a blastocyst to something that looks more like a baby. So please make sure that you have all your notes filled out and I will talk to you soon.